Well, hi everyone. Um, I have. We are going to review factoring. That's what we're going to do today. And I would just like to start with a prayer that um, as we go through this um, COVID-19 crisis that we're in, um, let's reach out to our Blessed Mother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Specifically, Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick, and cause of our joy. Shelter us, shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Okay. Well, I just have a couple of things I want to go over with you. These aren't notes, but I do want you to know a few things, just some adjustments as we get through and go through this, um, this time of online learning. And for the good of the order, I, first of all, I need, and these are new responsibilities for me, I need to get all the assignments for the week posted on Mondays. So I will have the first one ready early Monday before you get up. Um, the second one I will have later in the day on Monday. So just give me a chance to get that done in the evening. The first one will still be, the work will still be due on Tuesday at the end of the day. And the last one will still be due on Thursday at the end of the day. So that's kind of how we're going to do things. And second item of business here is you need to submit your work. This is different on PowerSchool instead of my email. You know how you took a picture and would um, send it to my email. I need you. I will have it open on PowerSchool for you to submit it there. So um, just that's a change and that is something I think you have to do in your other classes if you're doing that and they want us all to be consistent so I'm not going to be we won't be taking these on my email anymore the third thing is I miss all of you uh, a whole bunch and I am praying for you um, I want you to make sure you have a blessed holy week with your family um, and then one more thing which I would have put up here because it's kind of anticlimactic after those things but the office hours we're going to hold um, and the information is posted on the calendar and um, for the link that you will need for Google Meets but my office hours I'm going to hold from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. every Monday and Wednesday now um, some of you have um, MK's office hours that you go by and some of you may have Miss France's office hours that you use also um, Here's mine every Monday and Wednesday. This gives you a chance earlier in the day to look at the videos um, Get started on the practice and gives you a chance to um, ask some questions if you had some troubles with the assignment before you have to submit it on Tuesday so with all that said we are just going to review factoring. We have been doing this all year. You did it in Algebra 1 all year too probably, but um, we're going to just go over 
some of the factoring review, and then I have some problems I want you to work on out of the book, and I'll give you that after we go through our examples. So when we're factoring trinomials, okay, I like to set this up, and you've seen me do it enough. I think you might be used to it. Now I got negative 18 and 1 that I multiply together. So two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to 7. And I, I know 9 times 2 is 7. And I think we can work with that and make the 2 negative. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. 9 plus negative 2 is 7. So if I split up the 7x into x squared plus 9x minus 2x minus 18. So all I do when I do this is a way to split this middle term up, the x terms up. And then with these two x is a common factor, and I'll write x plus 9 here. With these two, negative 2 is a common factor. And negative 2 times x and negative 2 times positive 9 gives me negative 18. And then my final step, these terms that are in front, the x and the minus 2, and then our common this doesn't work if these aren't the same, so that's how we roll there. Now, the second example, um, put a dividing line here, got some boundaries, and multiplies. I need to take the negative 18 and multiply it by the 2, and that is negative 36. That's the a term, and the, that's the a coefficient, and the constant, a times c, so 2 times negative 18. So I need two terms that multiply to negative 36 and add to negative 5. Uh, let's see, 36 is 12 times 3, that's not going to do any good for us. Um, 9 times 4 is 36. I think that's going to be something that works for us, and I'll make the 9 negative. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, negative 9 times 4 is negative 36. So that's how I'm going to split up the negative 5x. 2x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 18. And I am factoring out an x. And there's nothing that goes into 2 and 9, so I'm just going to factor out the x. And I'll have two, x times 2x and then minus 9 here. 4x and negative 18. I think I can get a 2 from each of those. 2 goes into 4, 2 goes into 18. I think that's the biggest number. And 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 9 is a negative 18. Okay, those are the same. That's good. Let's put the x plus 2 as the first binomial we have, and the 2x minus 9 as the second binomial. We are reviewing this factoring because we need to do it in the new chapter that we're in. All right. Now, 3x squared plus 11x plus 10. I need two things that multiply. 3 times 10, that is 30. That's where I'm taking the a and the c. And then adds, multiplies to 30 and adds to 11. Well, what makes 30? Um, 15 times 2, that doesn't work. 10 times 3, 6 times 5 makes 30. And 6 plus 5 is 11. So I think that's where we're going. So I have 3x squared plus 6x plus 5x plus 10. All right, that's how I, the 6x plus 5x is used to split up the middle term, 11x. Now let's see what happens. 3 goes into 3x squared and 6x, or 6, and they each have an x too. So I'm going to put that, and I'll have x here and plus 2 here. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x. Now what goes into 5x and 10? I've got a 5, I think. And I'll put the x, 5 times x, and 5 times 2 will give me 10. Oh, good, those are the same. So this factors as to 3x plus 5, 
times x plus 2. Okay, hopefully that's a good review for you. Now, we also need to kind of remember how to do greatest common factor. 9, 3, and 6. Would you agree with me that 3 goes into these? H, H, H is on all three of them. This has K times K. This has K times K times K. And this has K. So they each have at least one K in them. So I'm going to pull a K out as the GCF. That's the greatest common factor of these three terms. Nine, three times three. I've got the H here. I need another K for K squared. Now this term, I have the 3 already. I have the H already. I need K to the second power to get 3HK to the third. And this one, I'll need a negative because this is negative. And 3 times negative 2. And that will about do it. All right. This next one. Greatest common factor, and then I say then a trinomial. Then may have to do something like we did up here. 3, 21, and 54 are all divisible by 3. x squared, x. Okay, we don't have, this one doesn't have an x, so I can't pull an x out. This has a y, this has a y, this has a y. So they all three have a y, so I'm going to pull the y out. I got the 3 and the y already out here, so I have the x squared here. I need negative 7 for negative 21, and then I have the x here, and then um, 3 times 18 is 54, so, and now I have this trinomial part. Okay, actually, I'm going to save that for a little later, no, no, let's do that. Um, but I'm going to make my x here, and um, I'm kind of regretting this now, but that's all right. 1 and negative 18. We need something that multiplies to negative 18, adds to negative 7, and I think in that previous example, I think I can give you a negative 9 and positive 2 there. So I'm going to write this as x squared. Uh, minus 9x plus 2x minus 18. So I'm rewriting that part. And I'm only dealing with this part. I'll leave the 3y kind of out here. Um, let's see. x squared minus 9x. x goes into both of those. There's x, and then there's x minus 9 here. 2x and 18. 2 goes into both those. And that's 2 times x minus 9 here. And my final answer. The 3y is, I've just kept on the outside all along while we've worked on factoring this part. And x plus 2 here. And then the common, the x minus 9 here. So here is the factoring that happens there. All right, one more thing is difference of squares. x squared minus 100. I don't know if you remember difference of squares that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. That is the pattern. Well, this is x squared minus 10 squared. So I'm going to do this as x plus 10 times x minus 10. And I'm done. That's how that one factors. Difference of squares. And then um, this is 4a squared minus 7b squared. If I write them as squares, 4 times 4 is 16, a times a is a squared, 7 times 7 is 49, b times b is b squared. Um, and so when I write my final answer there, I'm going to write 4a plus 7b times 4a minus 
7b. All right, there you go. God bless all of you. Um, please take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you again. And God be with you until then. Amen.